Hello and welcome back. Upon completing this video, you will learn what are JavaScript wrappers and what is their purpose. Now that we have acquired quite some knowledge on the WebRTC technology, we will see how and when we can use some JavaScript library wrappers for the WebRTC technology. A JavaScript wrapper is a set of functions that simplifies the usage of some other complex functions. A wrapper acts like a middle entity between the developer and the real objects that the wrapper handles. It could also be used to suggest detailed configuration for a subset of objects, depending on the scenario, or it could be used to hide unwanted features. The main benefit for you, the developer, is that you could reduce the effort and the knowledge required to use some libraries. You may ask, why use a WebRTC wrapper? We use it because it provides a set of functions that simplifies the WebRTC usage. It will handle the object's initialization and then it will start the client registration and media signaling processes. It will let you create and manage WebRTC sessions in a simple and fast way. So, let's summarize the main activities managed by a WebRTC wrapper schema. The initialization process will place the basic client configuration and it could ask for the user's information. Then, the registration process will take charge of the initialization of external channels and it will start the signaling process. The wrapper will also take care of session handling, getting user media and creating data channels. Finally, it will help developers by filtering and reducing the number of callbacks to manage. As you can imagine, since the initial release of the WebRTC technology, many wrappers have been introduced. First of all, since in the initial phase of WebRTC development the technology was in continuous evolution, the methods and the usage was changing fast, and the best way to use its API was to use a well-made JavaScript wrapper. In this slide, we can see only a small number of the WebRTC JavaScript wrappers – AppyDays, PeerJS, Phono, Simple WebRTC, and so on. Every WebRTC wrapper reported in this page and in general any wrapper you can find on the net could help you reach your objectives. When dealing with a brand new technology and when you have very little time to learn as much as possible, the alternative solution could be using a wrapper. Of course, you could also try to integrate this kind of wrapper in any of your projects and when you feel more comfortable, you could try to switch out to the real WebRTC API, removing any reference to that wrapper. Or maybe build your own wrapper. In the next video, we will see the main features of the PeerJS WebRTC wrapper and how to properly use it to build a working WebRTC app in a simple and fast way.